name is Mary. Abbey Road Studios has been part of my life for as long as I can remember. For many massive records. Well, movies. music lovers, get ready. The Mary McCartney Disney Plus documentary, If These Walls Could Sing, drops on December 16th. It's going to take you inside the world's most famous recording studio, London's Abbey Road. Well, if her name sounds familiar, maybe it's because <laughs> Mary is the daughter of music icons Paul and Linda McCartney. She's joining us right now with a very unique look at the historic studio. Nice to see you. Good morning, ladies. So, you know, I... Is, I know this might, might sound naive, but I only thought the only people who recorded at Abbey Road was your dad <laughs> and the Beatles. I mean, they are the ones that put it on the map, definitely. Yeah. I, did, I did not know any of the history of Abbey Road. I mean, I grew up going there a lot as a kid, as you can see from that clip, but I didn't know Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd was there. I didn't know that it was 90 years. Edward Elgar opened it in 1931. Yeah. That's crazy. crazy. I, I really love the documentary. I got a sneak peek last, last night. Yeah. Um, what was it like for you to put it together? Because as you said, there are pictures of you as a baby crawling on the floor of Abbey yeah. Road. Was it hard because you were so close to it? No, it was actually, it was, I haven't done a documentary before. I'm, I'm a photographer, as you know, first and foremost. But I was approached to direct it, so it was like, okay, I didn't know it was 90 years. I need my team around me. So I had an amazing editor, a story producer, and we sort of sat down and we wrote down the whole history mm. on bits of paper, stuck it up on the walls, and it was overwhelming. There was so much, but in the end, it jigsawed together in the edit. Well, yeah. did you say, Dad, you have to help? You know what, I said, I agreed to be the director and then I was like, I really hope people that I want agree to be interviewed. I was like, that's going to be really difficult to do if they go, oh no, I, I don't really do it. But, I mean, I've got Elton John, Jimmy Page, my dad, Ringo. Ringo was one of the first ones I did because he said yes and then he was in London mm. the next week it felt like so we had to like get the production together. That's amazing. And the interviews were in, in, in Abbey Road in Studio 2 so it's got this real personal feel to it. I think that it's um, a lot of people also the current artists that have recorded mm. there, Ed Sheeran, Florence and the Machine, Frank yeah. Ocean, yeah. like this, because of this history you have a lot of people that are current artists now, they're like, I want a piece of that, I want to record a piece of that history. And it's it's a really well. active studio yeah. still. To do all the beauty shots and the interviews, to get the actual studio space, because mm. it was all booked up, was really quite hard. I think the I... interesting thing about the studio as well is because you talk about this in the documentary, there was like a, a a sad point in the mm. in the studio where they had to like they weren't getting as many 60s rock bands but they found yeah. another way to to make income well it's studio one it has three studios studio two is the famous one that the Beatles made famous but studio one is this huge space for orchestras yeah. and like all classical mm -hmm. um, and in after like CDs and everything had been recorded they had no it was empty it yeah. was they were using it to play Badminton, they were putting tape down. <laughs> and they were there were plans to make it into a car park. But then the manager found that there was a, a film um, studio soundstage closing down outside London and he got the contract and it went to Studio One. He put a projector in mm. so the orchestras can watch the Incredible. screen when they're and all like Indiana Jones, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, so yeah. all of it's like one of the, the biggest that is incredible. You could do yeah. a whole documentary just on the film well, school. We're watching yours. Yes. right now. <laughs> if these walls could sing, we have another clip. Take a look. I don't remember the first time I came here. This is me in Studio 2, a photograph taken by my mum, who was a photographer and was in a band with my dad. I want to tell the story of some of the iconic recordings made here over the last nine decades from classical to pop to film scores. Spice Girls. Oh, the Spice Girls. I saw the Spice Girls. I know. It's such a great documentary. Wow. You will love it. It's on Disney+. Plus. When does it air? December 16th. So I have to ask you, Abby Rowe. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> What's she going to say? She's been in my presence before where we've had plenty of antics. Um, so, you know, growing I'll up... I'll tell you anything. Okay. Growing up, I mean, you've had to deal with a lot of crazy things, including, you know, rumors that your father was dead. Remember? Yes. Okay. First, there was the Abbey Road album cover, yeah. right? He had no shoes on, yeah. which, like, everybody was like, uh, that's because Paul is dead. And then there 
was what Strawberry Feels, if well, you play no, it back. It, it is the Abbey Road album cover, which is interesting because they went, he, you know, Dad's like, it was a sunny day. Yeah. He had sandals on and he just flipped off his sandals when they walked across because it was hot. But then John Lennon's wearing a white suit and thing. They were like, oh, this means that Paul is dead. Yeah. And then in the background, apparently, there's like the number plate says, 20, it sort of like almost reads 27 1 F, like if he was still alive. And people read all these things into it, but as it a, was just reading into it, obviously. A, and Dad was, I used to say to him, like, what, you know, and he was like, no, people would be like, but you're dead. And it's like, no, I'm here. Oh, but I think God. there was just this weird conspiracy, like somebody else had replaced him. Mm. And, so you know, did that's you, the bizarre world. What about the, the playing know, the songs backwards? Growing, growing yeah. up and then having somebody say, but your dad is dead. Yeah. That happened in a in a shoe shop once in Long Island. It was like, oh my, you know, but your dad. And he was like, no. And they were like, no, but we saw we, you know, the whole the whole thing. Oh and it was no, like, no, no. I remember no. that was my earliest <laughs> memory of like, what's going on here? Like, what are they saying? <laughs> and then it sort of opened up. But you know, it's a big adventure. And doing this documentary, I've learned so much about the Beatles and the recording yeah, what, process. What didn't What I'm didn't so you proud. know? What didn't you know? What I didn't, well, Abbey Road sort of changed recording history. So at the beginning, like the Beatles, for instance, are a great example, because they did all their albums apart from Let It Be, like I'm, I know all of these facts now that I've done this documentary. <laughs> but they started and it was three hour sessions. So you'd arrive rehearsed, you'd do a song, you'd have a break. And then as they became more and more successful, they'd get more studio time. Mm. And then now bands kind of go in and you kind of have you create, you write, you do everything there. So it was a very different time. And Abbey Road has the best boffins and people working there. They, they helped with the, the sound. And, the, you know, you will have seen in the documentary that I didn't realise that Abbey Road influenced the sound of the musicians because like, they had, like, instruments lying around in the studios from uh -huh. other artists. Yeah. There yeah. was a woman called Mrs Mills. So it's called the Mrs. Mills piano, and that's the piano that was in the corner, and they played it on Lady Madonna. Oh, and that sound is wow. because it was oh, in the studio. There's some historical musical pieces yeah. there. That's Just incredible. Just amazing. And also, I didn't know the session musicians, Abby, uh, Reginald Dwight, who then became Elton John, and Jimmy Page, were both session musicians. They learned in oh, yeah. your own. I didn't even know that. So, yeah, so there's great interviews with them, and uh, yeah, there's It's a, so there's good. A, yeah, Wow. Disney Marvel Plus. Marvel. What date again? December 16th. December 16th. Great to see you. Hey, listen, she's not only a terrific photographer uh, and now uh, a documentary, <laughs> documentarian, um, but... I like that word. Uh, <laughs> but she's also a great cook. Next yes. time, can we do a little cooking? I would love that. Because you got picked you. up by the Food Network? Yes, yes. We, we want to learn how to make the margarita. The margarita. I can do it. I mean, I'll send you a list. We've just done the last... The third season, the four episodes just dropped, and we had like guests like Jamie Dornan, Brian Adams. Wow. Guests wow. come and join wow. me, and we cook and chat together. I love that idea. You Mary, should come on and be my guest. I want to. I want to. Both I would just, of you. I want to chat all the time. You can make the cocktails, not the, the, the meatballs. The yeah. meatballs. Well, she, yeah. she's, a, she's a meatballs. vegan. Oh, she's we a do vegan. Veggie, veggie yes. meatballs. We do the veggie meatballs. Yes. <laughs> we'll do vegan. We'll, we'll eat. Do vegan. We'll, eat. Okay. We'll, we'll enjoy. Mary yeah. McCartney, everybody. Check it out on Disney Plus, uh, December 16th, If These Walls Could Sing. Mm. Nice Thank to you. see you. Thank you. Say hello to the family. I will. Uh, Mama Nancy yeah. and uh, Sir Paul. Nana Nancy. Mm. Nana Nancy. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Thank All you. Right. See you. Thanks. Eight